Hello everyone, in today's video I would like to address uh, something that uh, came recently to my mind again and it's about hotspots, hotspot colors to be exact. Uh, one of my friends, he recently uh, sent us an email uh, and he shared a video uh, which I will share in the description of this video about how trout perceive colors. And there it said that uh, some colors may be better than others, which makes sense, yeah? So, is it orange? Is it pink? What is the color that Trout sees the best? Uh, apparently, red is one of the colors in the color spectrum that's on the side where Trout should see the best. So that is why I'm using this Viva thread in red to see whether this holds true. I mean, there, like last couple of months I've been using red a little bit more because the same friend who shared this video with us also shared the thoughts of red being very good. So I tried it and it does work well. And when you think about it, it's like fashion in clothes. Uh, some things are popular now and then after a couple of years or maybe less, they will not become, uh, they will become less popular. And then they will be forgotten and then they will kind of pop out again as a uh, new fashion but it's actually the old one so same goes with the red if you think about it one of the most popular flies ever is probably red tag variations of it you have it wet you have dry you have it in so many variations it's incredible and uh, that that comes with a reason i'm sure of that and um, one of the reasons is obviously that the fly uh, that has red is obviously catching fish. Now, the tail is going to be Coq de Leon and I'm like using it, as you can see, very properly. Uh, like I'm just going to use a couple of those barbs that are left uh, and that's it. And this is the most difficult part. Let's just use it like so. I'll just try to cut out the tip part and still keep it aligned this okay now twist the bobbin holder counterclockwise and the thread will jump into your hands and you can catch your material easily yeah or something that I picked up when I was very younger lift your thread up put it between your fingers and hold it with your fingers that's called pinch loop go around and pull up you'll do the same and obviously it caught my rough hands a little bit but never mind now, let me check the length, it's a bit on the short side, so I'll just kind of pull it out because I need it a bit longer here, and that's it. Now, another thing to, to know, it's useful to know, is how to keep everything on the top of the hook shank. You can either keep it towards you because I'm pushing away from it, so in the opposite way of the thread, you pull the material, make this compensating uh, compensating pull to keep everything on the top of the hook shank or you can use uh, material like thread torque instead of just pushing it all the way non-stop you just go around softly pull up it will gather everything together and then go around pull up no tension and pull up this will keep everything on the top of the hook shank one run away but it's okay I'll just go back it up a little bit. This one ran away a long time ago, I didn't see it. So I'll just gather it now again with compensating pull, I would call it like that. And then same, I will use my body material for the... Oh, sorry. I will use my body material on the opposite side of me. So I will place it here because when I start wrapping, the first wrap will go under, avoiding the tails. That's something I've been talking for a while. That's something that uh, I picked up from Wayne Lu Allen. Now, uh, porcupine hair, I think is the proper pronunciation, not easy for me to say it, is the material. It's dyed olive and uh, I will just place it, as I said. I'm just gonna kind of flatten it out with my nail so it looks more like a peacock quill than anything else right now. I'm just gonna 
cut those tips that I don't need. And then let's rotate this. I haven't been this rusty for a long time. Now, again, counter spin the bobbin holder. Now it comes useful. Go around softly and control the placement of the thread where you want it. If you need to go cover a little bit more, that's good. And then create underbody that's smooth. To secure the bead, you want to make figure of eights around the hook eye and the hook shank. That will also create a little bit of a hot spot here. After each eight, I'm kind of tightening it. You stop now. I will take some super glue because super glue will like adhere to it. It will soak into this thread and keep everything safe. Okay, I'll add a little bit more. I want it really soaked here. Now, you can add super glue at the moment, but what I want to do first is I want to create an underbody with a slight taper. And I will do it, do it best if I'm untwisting the thread from time to time to have it flattened out. I see a little bit more. Just spin it from time to time, and yeah, I'm gonna start wrapping it towards the eye now. I have it pretty smooth, and you will see there is a slight indent over here, which I will use for two things. One is to kind of hide the tie-off point for the thicker end of the quill, well, hair. And the other one is to, to place my thorax over there. So as I was saying, my first wrap will go away from the tails, but then that one sneaked. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. That one sneaked away from me, but never mind. I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave the gap between each wrap because I want this thread to be shown through those wraps. It will create contrast and it will add more hot spots throughout the fly. Now that's enough. Now here I'll just go tighter. I'm going to catch the material here and that's going to be thorax area. I'm not gonna bother in any way to create thorax with like dubbing. I will just use CDC for the thorax. This tag end I'll just press it down with my nail can use some tools if you're biting your nails uh, to do so because it will hide it better and it will prevent any kind of uh, thread cuts because of the sharp edge. This is the right moment to add some UV glue. I'm using this one. I was mentioning this one in one, one of my videos. Uh, it's quite big pack and it's, I, don't, I forgot the price, but it's like dirt cheap. I'm just gonna go around. This will help with durability of this fly. It will add some nice, very nice color to this underbody. I mean, I love this thread, how it behaves when it's kind of wet. It has this wine color. It's beautiful, I think. I'll add some more. Tiny little drop. I'm using uh, my left hand on the vise, and then my right hand is leaning onto my left. I'm just kind of uh, making everything more stable here. Yes, and that's it. Now I'll go around, that's it. Clean the needle. Better now than never. And I'm just gonna cure it. Because I have OCD, 
where I'm going to use my new scissors. I have one set of scissors that I never use, except it's when I need something to be done very, very accurately. I'm going to cut it. It just bothers me. That little barb bothered me a lot. Now, you need to create a loop, tapping loop uh, for the CDC. So make a loop, go around your loop twice. That's how much I, how many times I like to go. And place your loop to the rear end of the thorax area. Now, attach dubbing twister. And I like this one because it's heavy. It keeps the tension always there. Choose a CDC feather. What I like to do, I like to remove those bottom ones. They're usually too fluffy. They kind of hide your nymph behind them. I don't like it. What I like to use is this middle portion here. Maybe even less. So this middle portion here is what I like to use. You don't need too many barbs to have your nymph uh, covered. And then there is a space between my clip and the uh, rachis over here that's going to create the thorax because when you wrap everything around the hook this will fold and double with the longer side of the barbs and it will create a nice thorax with still visible red thread below it so insert the, the barbs into the thread loop open the clip and keep it opened as you pull it out Spin the dubbing twister any way you want, not so important right now, because you will not allow it to jump anywhere as you wrap it around. Make a couple of those wraps, as many as you have or as many as you need. If, you're, if you have too many of these barbs around, then you can just stop in the middle of the process and stop and uh, tie it off. And that's it. What I like to do is I keep it without tension here so it doesn't loosen the tying thread. I leave a little tag just in case because everything is twisted. It's kind of pulling out. I keep the tension. I go down the bead a couple more time, times and yeah, that's it. Keeping the flat thread, flat, uh, sorry, keeping the thread flat will allow you to make better whip finish with your hands but if you're using whip finishing tool it's also going to lay nicer but if you're using your hands I will show you now if it's still twisted it will furl this part will furl onto itself and it will get broken which happens far less if you're using the whip finishing tool but it's always good to have thread flattened before because the knot will set more nicely and it will be more secure. So this is the quill nymph that I will send to my friend KJ. Uh, well, quill peccary hair nymph that I will send to my friend KJ. He will be uh, soon fishing for, for lineup trouts and I hope he will have some really, really good time with these. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe and see you next time.